Well, thank you, Mike. That's very kind of you to say so. Good morning, brother. Yeah, good morning. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, let's talk a little bit, first of all, about um, the ULES expansion, because we've seen uh, this morning that down in Sutton, the Lib Dem group of all people have actually said that they're going to stand up against Sadiq Khan's uh, movement and uh, against Sadiq Khan's suggestion. They're not actually going to let it happen there. Well, that's very interesting, because the uh, Lib Dems... Uh, the Lib Dems on the London Assembly, who could have voted to stop this, voted in favour of it, as did every other political group mm. on the Assembly, apart from the Conservatives. Yeah. Um, and what we've got here is the Liberal Democrats testing the water, seeing that there's widespread opposition locally, and they're trying to face both ways on the same issue, mm. which is not an unlib Dem approach. To <laughs> no, I can, uh, see, I can see why you would say that. But nevertheless, for whatever reason, if it is stopped in Sutton, then that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, I'd like to know what grounds they have for stopping it, because um, I know that uh, there are several London boroughs, my own in Bromley being one of them, that are looking at the potential for a legal challenge uh, of it. Um, I've been informed by um, the government uh, or by government ministers that there is no planning requirement for the cameras to be put up. Mm. So the grounds for a borough to unilaterally stop it, I'm not clear on at the moment. I hope that they're right. I mean, if Sutton have found a way to do this, then I would encourage all other boroughs to do the same. Um, but I haven't heard from them. I've seen various press releases saying they're going to, they're not going to allow it. Yeah. But I think they've got the right to stop it. And Transport for London have been very bullish mm. about saying that they'd like to work with the boroughs. But if the boroughs aren't going to cooperate, they'll do it to them anyway. And they think they've got the power to do it. Yes, interesting you say that because I did ask uh, the person we spoke to whether he uh, was aware of whether they could do it or what the legal challenge mm. might be or what the future might hold, and he didn't seem entirely sure. He was, it was a sort of suck it and see kind of policy, and we'll you know we'll see yeah. what, what they do about it because, like you say, one and I mentioned this too. One of the big rollouts is that they put loads and loads of cameras in, and if they start putting loads and loads of cameras in and start activating those cameras, then you're going to start seeing people getting fines on you. Well, you won't until August. Um, that's when the mayor wants it to, to roll out. Now, um, I would be very supportive of anything that slowed down the timescale at the very least, because we have a mayoral election in May 2024. Mm. I think the reason why the mayor, if you look at this ULES expansion and you look at the ones that happened before, both the introduction of the central London ultra emission zone and the expansion to the north and south circular, there was a very long lead-in period before it happened. The lead-in period now is a handful of months. And I think the reason why the mayor is rushing the timetable is so that it doesn't become an election issue. Mm. So if it comes out in August, the election is nine months later, right. and it's kind of been and gone and it's fading into the memory. If it's delayed, then all of a sudden it becomes an election issue. Right. And I think the mayor's rushing it for that reason. Yes. Um, so anything that slows this down, I think, is good, because then it gives people who are opposed to this the opportunity to boot him out in the elections in mm. May. And certainly there are plenty of areas like Sutton which if you sort of categorise them as relatively low um, use in terms of public transport, because they don't yeah. have, as, as he pointed out, they don't have the underground, they don't have the overground, yeah. they don't really have much, by the way, they don't have a tram service, they really only have buses, and they don't have mm. too many of those. So there's plenty of those types of ca uh, of council areas, aren't there, around the outskirts well, of London? Oh, I mean, my own uh, council is, is exactly that. Um, I mean, we've, we've had this conversation before. Yeah. Come you know, we. I mean, two-thirds of my constituency is rural. If you look at a an overhead map of my constituency, you see tons and tons of green and there's, you know, there are buses. Um, the bus, ironically, uh, City Car has been cutting the buses in, in parts of my constituency. Um, and there are trains that go into central London, but there is, there's nothing in the way of tubes. Mm. Um, the tube station to where I'm sitting at the moment is, and I'm sitting in my constituency office, the nearest tube station is North Greenwich, right. um, which would be from here about a half an hour drive. Right. So, you know, it we don't have- defeats the object, doesn't it really? Yes, it does. Um, you know, and, and simply saying lazily, as he does, that to all those public transport alternatives to the private car, there aren't. Not where I am. Um, and, you know, it, it's simply not viable to say this and say, oh, well, I'm going to invest the money we raise on, on more public transport after the event. That yeah. takes a year to provide. Right. In the meantime, you've, you've made life very, very difficult. Mm. For huge numbers of people. And how much of this um, expansion zone do you think has been factored in um, to Sadiq Khan's budget for next year? Because presumably there's a, a, an amount of money that he wishes to raise. Well, there is. I mean, the, the amount of money is, is sort of a moving target. I mean, there's various estimates. Um, but I, I made a speech in Westminster Hall uh, just before Christmas, and it was uh, one of the figures that I created from the fines, not from the charges, so from people that don't pay, it's been estimated by Churchill Insurance that it'd be close to four hundred million pounds a year. Yeah. So, you know, there's a very considerable amount of money that the mayor can raise here. And I'm completely convinced that's what it's about. Because yeah. 
If you look at the impact assessment that he himself commissioned, it says that it will have a negligible impact on air quality in outer London. So therefore, why do it if mm. it's not about air quality? It's got to be because he wants to raise money. Mm. The really insidious thing about this is that lots of the people that will get hit by this don't even live inside the Greater London boundary. So they have no say. They can't vote one way or the other. Mm. Um, so at that debate, we had my colleagues from Watford, from Dartford, uh, from Runnymede and Weybridge, all constituencies outside Greater London, but all with constituents who are going to be very considerably impacted by this, all of them speaking out against it. So it's a very unpopular policy. Um, and Sadiq Khan just doesn't seem to care. He's not no. listening to any. And he doesn't seem to have had much to say either about the uh, charming fact that London is now the most congested city in the entire world. You know, forget about Sao Paulo, forget about Tokyo, forget about, you know, uh, downtown Beijing. We are now oh. the most congested place on the planet. I mean, that is shameful, oh. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible, really. I mean, he keeps issuing, Transport for London keep issuing private hire licences. Uh, now, most of those vehicles will be driving in central London, which is already massively congested because that's where most of their customers will come from. Yeah. So they're competing for space. And um, because of his policies, uh, I mean, he's extended the um, cycling uh, enthusiasm of his predecessor. Uh, he's made, he's taken that on a bit. He's, he's, there's more roads being sectioned off of bus lanes. There's more traffic coming everywhere. There's more traffic lights. As well as um, we've got black cabs uh, who obviously have always been in the city, but more private licenses as well. Um, so it's slowing the traffic down exponentially mm. and making driving in any part of London really quite a horrible experience. But here in outer London, um, congestion is what it's always been, really. But the idea that this will help take congestion off the roads, it won't because there isn't an alternative. No. Or, well, what we know... Sense. Well, this is the thing. I mean, what we, he talks about air pollution all the time and he obsesses about how he wants to make the air cleaner. But what we can prove to him by showing him why London is the most congested city in the world is that all of his plans so far have simply served to make money. They haven't served yeah. to make it less congested. If anything, London's more congested. And I was told, I think, uh, probably two years ago, that there was something like 30,000 more cars in central London on any given day because of mm. all of those private hire vehicles you talk about. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot in that. I mean, it is, it's also true to say that cars, mm. as they become newer, are becoming less and less polluted. So in terms of air quality, it is improving. Um, but congestion will continue to rise when the public transport system is not as reliable as it needs to be. And part of the problem with the public transport system, particularly once you go outside the central zone, mm. is that it doesn't take you from A to B. Right. Uh, it doesn't take quite a long link in. So if I, if I were to uh, try to get to Westminster by public transport, if the trains were down, it would take me something like two to two and a half hours. Mm. I live 12 miles from the House of Commons. It's not an efficient alternative. No. If I can't get on the train... I end up having to drive, and that's a horrible experience as well. Well, that's the other problem at the moment, with uh, uh, all sorts of uh, strikes going on at any given moment. We discovered yesterday, that out in West London, where we've got another studio, um, there was a strike which affected the Elizabeth Line, which meant the Elizabeth Line wasn't running. There was some union called Prospect that nobody had ever heard of, who apparently had decided to down tools, and they said there were no trains. So you can't rely on the public transport system if that's going to happen on any given day. I mean, that's become increasingly so, and, you know... The when Sadiq Khan was running for mayor for the first time in 2016, he made a big show of saying he was going to roll up his sleeves and get around the table with the unions and make sure there were zero days of strikes. I think he's got by far the worst record in terms of strikes of any of the three oh, yeah. mayors. Yeah. Well, he promised, did he, not, did he not promise there would be no more strikes on the TFL? Um, yep. And then uh, immediately broke it. <laughs> yep. and, there's, uh, and there's been loads. And it's getting to the point now where people aren't sure whether or not public transport is going to be reliable. And that's, mm. that's not a good place to be. No, absolutely not. So in terms of just generally speaking, Gareth, in your borough, obviously, but also others, um, can people who want to object to this continue to do so? Can they do something about it? They can certainly object, and I'm encouraging them to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make as much noise as I can. Uh, I asked a question in the House of Commons yesterday about this and uh, about potentially uh, asking the government to explore reducing Senate Khan's funding if, you know, as a last resort. Yeah. He refuses to listen to people. And what I'm saying to people, because I'm getting lots of in, in, lots coming into my inbox from both my constituents and from people outside London who've seen speeches and things that I've made, to make their voices heard as loudly as they can. Mm. We've still got seven months until the mayor wants to introduce this. Um, so if he starts to see, if he starts to believe that his own prospects are imperiled, then he might change his mind on this. So I'm encouraging the local boroughs uh, who wish to, to, um, to push with their legal action uh, I'd like to see the detail of what Sutton wants to do. I know uh, where my local borough is going, and I know where Bexley and Hillingdon um, and, and others are looking to go. Um, so the boroughs can take legal action that way. But as many people as possible making as much noise as possible, I think is very yeah. important. 
Right. Well, we're certainly going to be doing that as well. So anything you need from us, we will be very happy to provide it. Gareth, thanks very much indeed. Gareth Bacon, Conservative MP for Alpington there, one of the areas affected 